In this lesson, we're going to draw the pattern that's going to make up the inlay on our ring. Before I do that, though, I need to know how large this inner surface is because we're going to map our pattern to that surface once it's created. So I'm going to use a command called Unroll Surface. So I'm going to go ahead and extract this surface, and it's going to break our history command, but we'll undo it, so that's not a problem. And then we'll unroll this surface. And you can see we're not able to unroll this surface. And that's because in addition to curving this way, we have an arc this way. So it's a, not a deformable surface, so it can't work with it. So Rhino 5 has a command called Smash. And Smash is able to work with surfaces like this. But it also works better if it has a guide curve. So we're going to go to Curve, From Objects, and we're going to do Extract ISO Curve. And you can see I move my cursor through the area here, and I can draw ISO curves based on where I click on the surface. I have my midpoint snap on, so I'm going to snap to the midpoint. Now that's created a curve. So I have a curve and this surface. So I'll use the smash command. And it asks me for a surface or poly surface to smash. I'll smash that one. Press enter. And then it asks me for a curve on this surface, and I'll click that curve there. So it's able to take this curve and extract that surface now. The only thing we need to be careful of, Smash is not quite as accurate as Unroll Surface since it works on much more complex surfaces. And that's actually one of the reasons I really wanted to do this curve. So I can take this curve and I can analyze it and find out the length. And that's 72.083 millimeters. And I can grab this curve and find out the length of that. And you can see it's a little bit different which means my surface is not quite the same as this surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that curve, and I'll make a new curve on here. That's gonna be 72.083 millimeters long. I'll snap it to this end. I'll dimension that just to double check it. And we're only accurate out to two decimal places on our dimension, so I'm still okay there. And then I'm gonna take this surface and stretch it. So I'll stretch it from there to there. It's going to stretch in this direction, and I'll snap it to that end. So now if I measure this curve, it's 72.08. Again, it doesn't go out to three decimals. So now I know my surface is the same length as the circumference of this object. I'll copy this, and then we're going to back up all the way back here until we get through back to where this is one whole object, and it's joined back with this. Now, copy is kind of a nice command, because you can undo a lot of things, and whatever you copied is still held in memory. So even though we've undone everything that created this, it still held that in memory, and we're still able to go ahead and paste that in. So now that tells me the size that I need to work within for my pattern. I'm going to make a repeating pattern that nests into itself, and I'll make two objects, and we're going to array those to make the whole pattern. I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about to make that a little clearer. So we know our height in the y direction, and now we can go ahead and draw some curves that are going to represent our pattern. So maybe something like that. And something kind of like that. Let me just fix that. It's a, kind of a little kink there. I want to sort of soften that a bit. Have that come out a little bit more. So something like that. Okay, I'm going to offset these curves, and the offset is actually what's going to create my second pattern. That way I'll know these will, will nest really nicely. So I've got an offset of 0.5, so I'll offset that over there. And I'll offset this over here. And I'm going to take this curve, I'm going to rebuild this curve. Give that seven points, perhaps. See what we get. I want it to be pretty close because I do want it to nest nicely. There we go. So I wanted to soften that point just a little bit. All right, so I have my curves that sort of represent the y direction. So now I'm going to draw my x direction here. And I'm not going to draw straight edges, I'm going to draw something a little more interesting on these even though the scale is going to be pretty small. So let's sort of just flow that shape one to one to the other.
and that looks pretty good. So these are the curves that are going to encompass my pattern. And now I'll just do a Boolean on these. So I'll go to my Curve tab, click on the Boolean command, and these will be the areas I want to keep. I want to make sure Delete Input is All, and that's going to be my pattern. I'm going to go ahead and round these corners just a little bit by putting a fillet on them. And let me try a 0.25. I have multiples to do here, so I'm going to right click on this icon. And that way I don't have to keep reapplying the command. I can just kind of keep clicking until I'm finished. And then I'll hit enter to exit that command. And you see as I drag this down, it gives us a nice kind of pattern. And these all nest very nicely. So our curves are all set, ready to go. If I check them just by doing the what command, I can see that they're closed poly curves. Closed poly curve. So those are all set, ready for the next step. So that'll conclude this lesson on drawing the pattern curves.